Hello everyone and welcome back to the Kingdom of Rizia. So in the last episode, I almost died from a biscuit. I am still very upset about this and I haven't forgotten about that. Um, the next time around when I have my modded playthrough, I, I will be going after Morella. I, I don't know what I'm going to do to them. I'm going to figure out what I can do to them, but I will get them back. That whole biscuit debacle. Um, we also found out about Venus, who, you know, of course, is our daughter and uh, Manus Saison. They are a happy couple now, and I've given them my blessings. And also, we found out that the RPP, um, the Rizian People's Party, they ended up winning the election without my help. I didn't need to actually intervene in that. Didn't need to spend any authority or anything in order to do electoral reform. I may still do that in the end if I get a chance to. But um, yeah, I didn't have to actually, you know, do anything in order to achieve this. But, you know, and we also have a little bit of budget and we have a little bit of authority. Now, we got, we're not gaining any budget. Uh, we're still gaining authority, but that's about it. You know, it's not a whole lot else going on. Oh, then we also managed to kind of solve our energy problems. We have plus three coming in because of the dam and uh, because of the oil pipeline um, that we have with Palais. So yeah, that's about it. Um, so now we're going to just pick up where we left off in the last episode, and we will be going to the House of Delegates. Once more, I took my seat next to Hugo in the middle of the House of Delegates. My uncle watched with agitation as the representatives began filing into the room. You have first visited the House of Delegates since the RPP took over as majority party. I hope they behave themselves in front of their king. Hmm... Their movement is undeniable now. Perhaps we should start listening to them. Throw them a scrap or two, but we can't let them have the whole roast. A gavel banged. Manus Saison positioned himself behind the house speaker podium, carefully put the wooden mallet aside. As the majority speaker of the House of Delegates, I hereby call this session to order. He bowed in my direction. Thank you for coming, Your Majesty. Daria forced a smile from behind the opposition podium. Yes, on behalf of both of our parties, your presence is much appreciated. She nodded at Manus, who flipped open a binder. The first item on our agenda is an update on Zeal. My constituents, especially those in Brennis, are eagerly awaiting the end of the Zeal Agreement's three-year probationary period and the return of our land. However, some believe that cooperating with Waylon on the, on the persecution of their Blutish minority has been a bridge too far. Sorry about that. Had to make a little cut there for a second. We are on the same page here, Mr. Saison. My party is particularly concerned that Rizia's participation in Waylon's Operation Bear Trap is damaging our lucrative international partnerships. More to the point, it has alienated Rizia's Gokanda's population, with whom we are already on shaky ground. The same goes for our border ban, which has been criticized as unfairly targeting those of Gokanda's faith. I will say that agreeing to fully integrate Wizic citizens while restricting rights for other migrant groups has led to some friction. Yes, my party has always been of the opinion that this term should have been left out of the amended treaty. I don't think that's the conclusion we should be drawing, Madam Speaker. It's a matter of consistency. Thankfully, the trade deal seems to be proceeding as planned. Daria put up a hand. If and when the territory is finally returned, there are questions about how it will be reincorporated into Rizia. What questions, Mr. Durava, Mrs. Durava? Zeal has always been a part of the province of Brennis. That may be true, but in the interest of stability, Reincorporating it under Rizia Apiri jurisdiction is the obvious choice. It is the same reason why the Palais Administrative District has not yet rejoined Carte Monteclair. That decision was due to ongoing border difficulties. Zeal faces no such danger. How can you say that after the Friendship Day incident? There's no telling what Waylon will do, even if Zeal is returned without a fight. At this stage, Waylon will not want to risk damaging our agreement. If they do, my province can handle it. The volume in the room grew louder as the delegates began arguing amongst themselves. I turned to Hugo. Hmm.
Shouldn't Zeal's citizens decide for themselves who governed them? Don't go down that route, your majesty. Holding any kind of election in Zeal opens the door for Wayland to interfere. Eventually, Manus motioned for order. The delegates quieted down. Moving on to more pressing topics. Next on the agenda is a discussion regarding the current religious climate in Rizia. I must mention the growing pressure from Blutish and Dirtian communities to lift our so-called blasphemy law. Together with the border ban we implemented in agreement with Wayland, they point to they point to it as evidence that the crown discriminates against Golcondism. Hmm. Hmm. Lifting the blasphemy law has long been on my agenda. I will make it my priority. Granting all citizens an equal right to worship would be a great step forward for freedom in Rizia. On the other hand, I understand public concerns about legitimizing what some see as an, as an extremist sect. There are those who are worried that if Rizia grants more rights to Gokandis, the kingdom will fall victim to the same ideologies as Dirtia. Even if the blasphemy law is revoked, Rizia will never turn into Dirtia. Yes, I also believe these fears are unfounded. The benefits of revoking the law outweigh the, the drawbacks. To end on a more positive note, the House of Delegates is pleased to report that the Rizian public has a favorable opinion of the Crown. I have no idea how. Living standards for the lower classes have improved. Again, I don't know how. But our energy stores are still a cause for, for anxiety. Happily, Rizians of foreign descent are finally beginning to gain the same rights and privileges as everyone else in this country. We still have some way to go before workers are treated with the respect they deserve. Overall, our government cannot rest on our laurels. We're still trying to make up for hundreds of years of inequality. Objection. You speak of the improved lot of commoners while ignoring the businesses and noble institutions that make up the beating heart of this kingdom. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> All of my subjects love me. End of conversation. Uh, the speaker said that public opinion of me was high. That includes the wealthy. Not necessarily. Your approval has been slipping among the nobility. You've lost the support of your own province's noble families. I looked at Hugo. He avoided my gaze. Not quite as rosy a picture as Mr. Speaker is painting. Hmm. If that's true, then I have work to do. I'm happy you see it that way. My party has suggested a number of proposals to improve the situation. It is our hope you will enact them. Um... Very good, I'll have another look at them. That is all we ask. Manus closed the binder and looked up. That concludes today's session. Unless, of course, His Majesty had any closing remarks. Uh, in fact, I do. House Speaker Saison, esteemed delegates. The delegates were all listening closely to me. I respect the criticism you have expressed today, and I will take it to heart. Uh, you can expect prompt action from the Crown regarding matters you've brought up today. Mm. Thank you, and Glavorius Oxarizia. Hugo and the delegates repeated the phrase. My uncle and I remained seated as the session adjourned. Any thoughts on today's session, Your Grace? The Saison boy is getting overconfident since his election win. I would be careful of how much you capitulate to his party. He kept his eyes on the delegates as they left the hall. And I don't trust his assessment of public opinion. The whispers I've been hearing tell a very different story. He picked up his attache case and paused to look at me. It's been a while since the two of us caught up. I hope you'll do me the honor of paying me a private visit once you're back from your trip to Dirtia. Hmm. Hmm. The honor would be all mine, Your Grace. Hugo rose and bowed. Until then, Your Majesty. I stayed in my seat until the room was completely empty. Was Manus right? Was my public happy with my reign? And if he was, where would I go from here? Yeah, I don't believe that for a second. I mean, 
I could see it being like neutral, but um, yeah, I, I can't see it being that good, honestly. <laughs> well, let's see. We do have a few things we could turn around and pass permanent work permit for labor hands. Yeah, I don't think I want to do that. <laughs> it's going to cost me a budget. So, yeah. Mm, that's going to cost me budget. Everything nice that I can do is going to cost me budget. So, hmm. I don't think it's change state religion to nerdy. Through this, uh, through this decree, the state formally recognizes nerdy as its official religion, transitioning from Bruce's roots. A branch of nerdy itself. The change reflects a consolidation of spiritual belief systems and practices under a broader religious umbrella, fostering greater unity within the religious diversity of the nation. Huh. I kind of want to do that. That might not be so bad to have. Um. And again, you know, we can buy military equipment and we can also do the Havis coal mine development. Hmm, it would cost two budget. It would give me plus one energy. I don't want to do any energy. Um, this would give me tourism, but it would take two turns to construct. Hmm, I could build the Zeal Intelligence Hub in maybe in maybe Nortis, but that also would take two turns. Strengthen Palais border for fortifications. I could do that. So yeah, there's a couple things I could do. This will cost energy. I don't want to do that, even though I can kind of afford to do that. So yeah, I don't think I'm going to actually do anything. I'm just going to kind of let this ride for right now. And then we'll see how things go. Maybe on the next turn, I'll see there's anything else by the end of this turn that I want to do. Territory of Zeal. Funding resistance in Zeal territory. Hmm. There is an option to intensify funding for local resistance movements against the Wessex administration in the contested Zeal territory. This maneuver aims to escalate diplomatic leverage, exerting pressure for the reintegration of zeal into Rizian sovereignty. While increased support for the resistance could sign significantly sway the Wessex government's stance, it also risks destabilizing the region, potentially justifying Wayland's claim to retain zeal for national security. Hmm. What? Ah, oh, you gotta be kidding me. Uh, I mean, this is what I'm keeping the budget for, but shit. Mm. Cause I feel like, yeah, this is just going to cause problems. Welp. Increase funding to the Ariana Tourist Association. God damn it. Uh, well, again, at least I'm not losing budget, so I guess there's that. The only thing I can hope now is that I'll get some type of, you know, some other type of sale or something like that here soon. Uh, read the report. An additional shipment of supplies, including more specialized materials like sound systems and a second printing press have been dispatched to the Ariana Tourist Foundation in Zeal. Again, I want to try to be more peaceful. Well, I want to try to be peaceful about this, but we'll see how things go. Uh, okay, so this is the trip to Dirtia. What do we have up here? Deepening involvement in Vindanism's civil war, responding to Vindanism's critical military request. Oh, God. Um, as Vindanism's civil war intensifies, the monarchist forces under Prince Consort Kabuin Sang Tam launch a major offensive against key strategic cities held by the revolutionary factions. Battles in the industrial heartland of Rakara, the port city of Ping, Pinguvi, and the fortified position in Tamarin have reached a critical stage, with the conflict's outcoming hinging on these decisive confrontations. 
The Vendanism request for Rizian support comes at a time when intervention could significantly alter the war's trajectory. Um, let's see. Maybe I should go ahead and dispatch naval forces uh, to support. That might help. Yeah, let's do that. And hopefully they'll give me something back in return. All right. Anti-intervention protests in Monkey's Harbor. A group of anti-war activists attempted to block the ships carrying military aid for vendanism from leaving the port. Their attempt was unsuccessful with law enforcement swiftly arresting the troublemakers. Okay, and we have a couple news articles. King stepping up military assistance to besiege the monarchy. King Ramis has announced additional aid to our allies in vendanism as their prince consort valiantly attempts to ward off a revolution against his rule. Not only is this a chance to demonstrate Rizia's military prowess to, to other corners of the world, it also provides vital experience for our own conflicts. Unruly mob disrupts peace in Isa. The peace in Isa was disrupted yet again when an unruly mob of protesters convened on the streets, voicing petty grievances against their rightful duke, Ricardos Torres. As one of the few provincial leaders to hold on to his values in a country that has taken an increasingly pro commoner pro-foreigner turn, Duke Ricardus deserves respect, not derision. The latest event was a stark reminder of the Brennis Provincial Police's, uh, Police Force's persistent soft approach since their installment in the city, a stance that is increasingly viewed as undermining the respect for law and order. It has been argued that the force's ongoing leniency emboldens dissenters and erodes the public's respect for their established institutions. The Herald questions the wisdom of the Brennis police, police's continued tolerance in the face of such demonstrations, especially, con especially contrasted with their hardline approach towards patriotic group Suamina, whose counter-protest on the same day was brutally squashed. Uh, Venonism civil war escalates Rizia to sending uh, ships to the region. Monarchist forces under Prince Consort Cabo and Sang Tom have launched a major counter offensive against revolutionary forces aiming to recapture key cities in the country, country's heartland. Fierce battles are raging in cities like Rakkara, Penguvi, and Tamarin, with the Watchtower of Human Rights voicing concern about the mounting civilian casualties as a result of the intensifying urban warfare. The Kingdom of Rizia has already announced additional support for the Vendanism regime, dispatching military ships to secure shipping lanes and provide coastal bombardment support. Other vital allies of the Prince Consort within Grace are reportedly also considering stepping up military aid. I just want some money out of this. Like, you better give me something out of this. All right. Now we have a meeting with the Grand Wise Manasmo. Standing on a remote mounting mountain plateau outside of Nao, the Silver Garrison was the headquarters of the Dirtian government as well as the dwelling place of its leader, Supreme Wiseman Jorga Asmal. For our meeting today, Asmal had granted me the rare permission to enter his inner sanctum. After a lengthy drive up steep curving roads, our motorcade parked just outside the garrison's gate. Titus and I met Saul as we exited our prospective vehicles. I confess that I do not know what to expect, Your Majesty. I've studied Gokanda's compounds like these excessively, but never been allowed inside. Mm, I, must, eh, I am surprised you studied a religion that you despise so much. Uh, thinking of converting, Grand Wiseman? Never. I still dream of the day when our brethren return to the fold. The heavy gates swung open and a group of Asmal's guards ushered us inside. The garrison's grounds were much larger than I would have guessed, almost the size of Port Drazen's old town. A gleaming silver pillar rose up from the center, surrounded by a cluster of administrative and religious buildings. Greenhouses, storage silos, and living quarters lined the perimeter, separated from the inner circle by a clear natural stream. The first residents we saw were women in identical white dresses, drawing water from the stream and carrying baskets of vegetables to and from the greenhouses. These are seekers, Your Majesty. It is said that through their physical labor, they will gain the mental clarity they need to begin their pursuit of Gokanda. Hmm.
And the fact that there are no men among them is coincidence? Not at all, Your Majesty. Women in Dirty and Gokanda's communities are often limited to the seeker role, while men are permitted to advance. As the guards led us closer to the pillar, the sound of men's voices could be heard. Short, sharp shouts emitted in perfect unison. The disciples. They practice purification of the spirit through strict martial arts regimens. Hmm. I bet Titus could take them all on. Not by the sound of it, Your Majesty. We emerged into the center of the, of the garrison. In front of the pillar was a training ground the size of a football field, flanked on either side by white marble temples. On it, some four dozen men were engaged in combat drills. Titus watched in open admiration as they executed a complex choreography of strikes, blocks, and counterattacks, each punctuated by a forceful cry. A gong chimed in the distance, almost instantly. The disciples spread out to form a perfect circle around us. Jorga Asmal, dressed in the same robes I had seen him wear at the Alliance of Nations, stepped out from their midst. Welcome to the Silver Garrison, Your Majesty. Hmm. Thank you for the demonstration, Supreme Wiseman. The skill of your disciples is admirable indeed. They still have far to go, but thank you. His smile curdled as he turned to Saul. So, Grand Wiseman, we finally meet. I have been looking forward to it, Supreme Wiseman. Shall I lead us in a Ruistus prayer ceremony? For this special occasion, I had something different in mind. A traditional, a traditional dirty and duel of generosity. Saul's face turned white. <laughs> hmm. It would be a great privilege to participate in your holy tradition? <laughs> I don't want to fight. You are familiar with our customs. Even better. No weapons, no bloodshed, each leader represented by a champion of his choosing. He spread his arms wide. Talam Estari, Zarak Nalin. The circle of men flattened out into a long line. Asma slowly walked from one end to the other, then back to the middle. He stood in front of a, particular, a particularly tall, well-built disciple and bowed. The man took a step forward and returned the gesture. I will be represented by Lauren. His participation in this duel shall be his final challenge before his ascension to the rank of adept. The rest of the, the, uh, of the disciples applauded. Saul politely followed suit. Asmol turned towards Titus, my bodyguard tensed up instinctively. Captain Gordian, I've heard tales of your fighting prowess, but before and after you began service, both before and after you began serving the king. Am I right to assume that you have brought this man as your champion, your majesty? Hmm. I have. Captain Gordian shall represent me in this duel of generosity. Saul nudged Titus forward. The captain bowed. Yes, I will do my best to make the crown proud, sir. Excellent. I'm looking forward to witnessing a Rizian Golden Guard in action. Each fighter will now have five minutes to prepare. Lauren nodded his assent and walked away. He knelt on a patch of grass and raised his arms skyward in prayer, his face a mass of concentration. Titus removed his blazer. He performed a few stretches and started throwing practice jabs in the air. I walked over to him. Hmm. Mm. Uh, I won't interrupt his preparations. Yeah, I'm not, uh, or should I? Mm, maybe that's a little too pompous. <laughs> Why aren't you praying? The other guy's praying. Uh, I know you can take him, Titus, but I want you to let him win. He nodded. Understood, sir. A short while later, another gong sounded. The disciples formed a tight circle around Titus, and the man Jorga Asmal had called Lord. The Supreme Wiseman stepped between them. The duel will last ten minutes or until one opponent acknowledges the other's superior skill in combat. 
Should a fighter draw blood, the duel will be called off immediately. Its result void at, void before the Lord. You will bow to one another and the duel will commence. He stepped back into the circle. He and the disciples began a slow, deep voice chant in dirty and as Titus and Lauren bowed to one another. The moment they began sparring, it was obvious how evenly matched they were. The dirty and fighter moved with a fluid unpredictability, Titus with sharp, deliberate precision. Every strike was met with a parry, every advance with a retreat. I snuck a look at Jorga Asmal. The Supreme Wiseman seemed utterly spellbound by the spectacle unfolding before us. Suddenly, I heard a cry of pain. Titus was doubled over on the ground, clutching his side just below his ribcage. Lauren looked dumbfounded, reaching, reached a hand down to help. Titus swatted it away and lurched unsteadily to his feet. He had a look in his eyes that bordered on feral. Hmm. I won't say anything. I won't interrupt. I said nothing. Titus and Lauren stared at each other down for a moment, then resumed their dance, this time with a slightly more aggressive edge. The ten minutes were nearing their end. With a glance at me, Titus gracefully fainted to the right, just in time for his opponent to land a forceful blow to his jaw. Sir, you couldn't take a... You could have took a little weaker of a hit, sir. He shook it off with a smile and held both hands up in the air, signaling his concession. Asmol signaled for the circle to stop chanting. He stepped in and gleefully applauded. The Lord has blessed us with a beautiful fight. This bodes well for our two countries. Your performance was beyond expectations, my champion. You will make a fine adept. He took his disciples' hands and kissed him tenderly on the lips. The surrounding crowd erupted into cheers. Titus looked around uneasily. Is that normal here? Unfortunately, Captain Gordian, it is. Saul grimaced. Saint Warwick would despair at what they've done to his sacred teachings. Do you not agree, Your Majesty? Mm. <laughs> uh, I'm between these two. Um, it's not my cup of tea, but I won't disparage their culture. It is no culture. It is a mockery of Ruiz's values. We turned our attention back to Asma. The disciples had begun to disperse. An auspicious start to our meeting. This way, please. Titus stood outside as Saul and I followed the Supreme Wiseman through a door at the base of the pillar. A staircase led down to a softly lit room, its walls lined floor to ceiling with bookshelves. There were no tables or chairs, just a number of comfortable-looking cushions on the carpeted floor. Asmal gestured for us to sit. This is the very heart of the garrison, Your Majesty. I never make a political decision without consulting the teachings of St. Warwick. Mm. Mm, I would not presume to have your religious wisdom. But I do often seek the advice of Grand Wiseman Ignatius. Saul nodded solemnly. We in Rizia find that the dual burden of spiritual and political leadership is too great for one soul to shoulder alone. I'm afraid your Grand Wiseman has been giving you flawed advice. I don't know how else to explain the treatment of Golcondas in your country. Hmm. Perhaps I've been harsh on Golcondas in the past. I'm willing to make amends. Your words will only have meaning when they are followed with action. Asmor crossed his arms. You would not have come here today if you did not want something from me. But first, we must discuss your so-called blasphemy law. His eyes were fixed on Saul. The Ark Sanctuaries of Plavo, Benevan, and Jaws are three of the most sacred sites in the Ruas' religion. It is not fair that my people are denied access to them. When you are allowed to enter them, you're, you crowded out the real Ruasis to the point of damaging one of our precious sanctuaries. If you wish to limit the flow of visitors to your arch sanctuaries, we will not oppose that. But I suspect your law has never been only about overcrowding. Saul sat upright. 
It is no secret that the majority of Ruicism leaders regard Gokandism as a taint on our religion. A taint? Gokandism has millions of practitioners, all of whom would testify that we are following the one true path St. Ruic laid out for us. Hmm. Doesn't enlightenment through violence directly contradict Ruiz, Ruiz, Ruiz's teachings? Jesus. <laughs> Not violence. As Ruiz wrote, one must hone the disciple, the, dis, the discipline of the body as well as the spirit to guard and guide the virtues bestowed by the divine. Yet in the quiet whisper of peace, truth and righteousness take root and flourish. Hmm. Mm. Don't you see? You're both right. Both men glared at each other. Hmm. We agree on so many other things, Supreme Wiseman. Can we not get around this somehow? If you do not lift this ban, any relationship Dirtia has with Rizia will be strictly transactional in nature, if that. My people have, m have mined your gold, built your weapons, extracted your gas, yet they are barred from their, religious, their religion's holiest of places. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, it is not dirty and laborers we are worried about. It is, it is holy pilgrims. Laborer and pilgrim alike pray to the same God, your majesty. You cannot judge dirtyans only by the value they provide to your kingdom. I know the strife Rizia is facing. If you would see reason and lift this unjust ban, there is much we in Dirtia can do to help you. Hmm... Can you promise that your people will respect the rule of law in Rizia, whether or not it clashes with Gokandism? I cannot control what Dirtians do in your country, but I will help you preserve order at the three Ark Sanctuaries to the extent that I am able. Saul looked at me with warning in his eyes. You tread a dangerous path, Your Majesty. I do not know whether Rizia can tolerate an influx of Gokandis. Hmm. Oh, well, I guess I just can't do it. Okay. Hmm. Uh, yes, I agree. I'm sorry, Supreme Wiseman. I cannot do as you ask. His face tensed. Very unfortunate, Your Majesty. There's nothing more we can accomplish today. I beg you both to get out of my compound. <laughs> Jesus. He gestured towards the door. Saul stood and looked him in the eye. It is not too late to repent, Supreme Wiseman. I could say the same to both of you. He ushered us out of the room and up the stairs. The sun was still shining brightly as we emerged from the base of the pillar. Outside, we encountered Titus and Lauren. The dirty and fighters were coaching my bodyguard as he swung a wooden practice sword. On seeing us, both men abruptly stopped what they were doing and snapped to attention. Your Majesty, shall we go? Hmm. What's the rush? It's time for you to leave, Your Majesty. We've done all we set out to do. Asmal extended his hand to me. Hmm. I hope to see you in Port Drazen soon. I will consult with my schedule. <laughs> The sounds of sung hymns and clashing swords accompanied us as we made our way out of the compound. I knew that I would never see the Silver Garrison again. Welp, um, that was a problem, and I couldn't do anything about that. So, yep. Um, and let me see. I'm guessing what did I need in order to turn around and either get rid of the homosexuality ban or something like that. I would have needed three authority instead of two. Uh, let's see. And I would have needed four authority for that. So, 
just didn't have the authority. All right, so we have a requested meeting with Hugo. My shoes echoed on the stone as I walked down the palace corridor to Hugo's study. My uncle had invited me for a one-on-one -on -one talk, and though I had plenty on my mind, I could hardly decline. Titus remained on guard outside as I pushed open the door and stepped inside. I cast my eye over the filigreed mahogany desk, the antique cabinets and the tasteful paintings and sculptures lining the walls. A fire flickered in the fireplace. Two leather armchairs had been set out in front of it, one empty and the other occupied by Hugo. My uncle rose and bowed upon my approach. Your Majesty, thank you for joining me this evening. Mm -hmm. uh, come off it, Hugo. It's just the two of us. Talk to me as equals. As you prefer, Ramos. He beckoned me over and we both sat. Tell me, my nephew, how much thought have you given to the future of House Torres? Uh... Mm, it's the future of this kingdom that concerns me, not of this house. The two futures are one and the same, your majesty. Our family's roots can be traced all the way back to the resident empire. We have survived the war, conquests, and numerous challenges to the throne to be where we are today. He picked up a poker and jostled the logs in the fireplace. A shower of sparks flew upwards. I brought you here to give you a warning. Certain members of our house have begun to speak ill of you. Yeah, probably you. Hmm. <laughs> mm. My decisions were made with my country in mind. If that pisses off a few, a few cousins, so be it. Our relations are unfortunately more than merely pissed off. You have been less than subtle about your reform intentions, to the point where the anti-monarchist radicals of the Rizian People's Party now hold a parliament majority. Yeah, and you probably couldn't run a damn election either. He clutched at his brow. Ramos, you must know that you cannot have it both ways. Valenquiris will only support your reforms if House Taurus is assured some measures of con continuity. Mm. Uncle, I am intent on reforming the country precisely because we cannot go on as before. You don't understand. Alienate House Taurus and you, King Ramus, will not go on at all. I am loath to remind you, but there are those in House Taurus who believe my brother and hence you should have been removed from the royal line of succession after introducing commoner blood. Your actions as king have unfortunately poured fuel on those flames. Hmm. What exactly are you implying? Are you calling my legitimacy in, as king into question? Of course I respect your legitimacy, your majesty. I'm simply repeating the claims of others. I have not even mentioned our house, gra our house's gravest concern, Manus Saison. He spoke the name like a curse word. I'm certain you had good intentions in allowing the Saison heir to court Vina. But I will tell you this, if you permit Her Highness to marry this man, your grip on the throne will weaken to the point where I cannot recover it. Hmm. Uh, he'll give up his name if he marries her. Their children will, will still be Tauruses. At the expense of Rizian tradition. You needn't allow your reign to be, outdone, be undone by a pair of starry-eyed youths. There are actions that can be taken. Actions? That sounds like a euphemism if I ever heard one. You're right. I should speak to you as an adult. He's an ambitious young man. There must be something he wants more than the princess. And if the carrot doesn't work, there's always the stick. I like carrots. They're full of vitamins. 
By all means, make him an offer. However, this doesn't solve the problem of whom the princess should wed. Hmm. I'll hazard a guess. You think the lucky groom should be Rico? There is a reason my son has not yet married, yes. A royal union between two Tauruses will secure the future of our house beyond a shadow of a doubt. Hmm. <laughs> mm. After the mess Rico's made of Isa, you still want Vina to marry him. He did the best he could given the lack of support from the crown. I do, I do not wa want to worry you, but at this point, pairing Vina and Rico may be the only way to prevent key members of our house from switching allegiances. He paused in thoughtful reflection, short of producing a male heir yourself. I should stop harping on about this. I know you and the princess will make the right decision. Hmm. You're my Grand Vizier and my uncle. Your advice is always valuable to me, and if I could have you executed, I would. But that would probably cost authority. We rose from our chairs. The fire began to flicker out as Hugo ushered me out, of the, out the door. Titus sh shadowed me down the hall as I made my way back towards my quarters. On the way there, we passed my study door. Hmm... Let's see. Come in for a second, Titus. I want to speak to you privately. Certainly, Your Majesty. Titus and I entered the study. I shut the door behind us. What is it? How are you? I'm well, Your Majesty. The fate of zeal has been weighing on my mind, as I'm sure it has yours. Hmm... Can I ask you something? What happened to you back in Dirtia? Titus flinched. I must have been thrown off by the altitude. I'm sorry if my performance displeased you. No worries, it happens to the best of us. Also, I told you to lose. I assure you, if we visit Dirty again, I will be better prepared for such an occasion. Was that all you wanted to ask me? Hmm. I'm not going to assassinate Manus Cezanne. Um, again, you know, look, at this point, you know, we're at the end of the game. This country's royally fucked. So, I mean, <laughs> at this point, I'm just kind of willing to live and let live and see what happens. I probably will die in the end. Um, who knows? Maybe I can flee the country if I'm lucky. But yeah, at this point, I'm, I'm kind of just, uh, I'm just, I'm sold on these decisions that I've made that, they I can't do it. I can't undo anything. And I'm just kind of royally screwed. So I'm not going to try to backtrack on some of these things now. I'm just going to go ahead and let it play out as it may. But then when I'm reborn as the God King Ramus with infinite authority and infinite money and infinite energy, I am going to deal with all these traitors. Thank you, Titus. You're dismissed. I'll leave you to it, Your Majesty. With a bow and a salute, he left the room. Go in and call Manus. After telling Titus to wait outside, I walked into the study and picked up the phone. I asked the palace operator to give me a private line to Manus Saison. After a few rings, he answered. Promise, to what do I owe this pleasure? Hmm. I just had an uncomfortable talk with my uncle. My house is pressuring me to dispose of you. The lion was quiet for a moment. Should I be surprised? I was practically born with a target drawn on me. Hmm. Yes, but now whatever affects you affects Vina. Please be careful. I understand. I will. Pursuing a path of reform was always going to lose your, you support from House Taurus, but the Sazans are prepared to protect you from the fallout. Still, if you want to be sure of their, our, loyalty, there is one thing you have yet to do. Bring Angelica Sazon home. 
and my mother's in my uh, my mother's exile. Hmm. Um, a canny suggestion. How Cezanne will be considerably stronger with its matriarch back on the mainland. Stronger, and in great debt to you. Obviously, it's your decision. But if you share my goal of bringing true democracy to Rizia, this will help us immensely. Uh... Your dedication to your mother is touching. I'd do the same if it were mine. This is larger than just me. Bringing her back would bring hope to all of Brennis. And I guarantee it will get you the support you need from my house. Hmm. For your sake, you better be right. Uh... I still have faith that we can change the country together, Mr. Saison. As do I. I should be going now. Thank you for your call. We said our goodbyes and hung up. I put down the receiver and looked at the phone. And I will leave the study. Titus escorted me back to my chambers. My guard wished me good night before taking up his usual post outside my door. As I climbed into bed, I thought about my conversation with my uncle. Who would carry on my name? And what would my legacy be? All right, so we have a possible coup in the works. 750th anniversary of Isa University. Okay, and I went to Isa University, so that's going to be interesting. Pardon of Duchess Saison. As King of Rizia, you have the chance to pardon certain political prisoners. The Saisons have once again pointed to their long-standing petition asking for the release of their matriarch, Angelica, whose husband plotted the infamous royal kidnapping in 1926. And I will issue a royal pardon for Angelica Saison. Now, you know what? I'm not mad at this. I'm glad that this is allowing me to do this for free. But there are other decisions in this game that I would have liked to have been, um, you know, free if that was going to be the case. You know, I'm still a little pissed about the boat thing. But um, but yeah, you know, it would have been nice if those were free also. But say, Lavi, here we are. So issue a royal pardon for Angelica Saison. I'm sure the news is going to love this. <laughs> Traitor pardoned. His Majesty has issued an official pardon to Angelica Saison, former Duchess of Isa and wife of traitor to the throne, Lucas Saison. It has been nearly 30 years since the erstwhile Duke conspired to kidnap the Crown Prince, a plot that was ultimately fooled when his spouse revealed his whereabouts to King Valero's security forces. Following the successful rescue operation spearheaded by our then allies from Wayland and Lucas Saison's swift execution, Duchess Angelica was ordered into exile. The full extent of her complicity in the kidnapping was never revealed. Now, for reasons unknown, it seems she will be returning to the mainland from the Calacabez village, where she has now spent over half of her life. We trust that she will spend the rest of it expressing her gratitude for His Majesty King Ramus's, uh, Ramus and his infinite mercy, even towards those who have wished to do him harm. All right, so to the 750th anniversary of Isa University. Cameras flashed all around as my royal motorcade rolled up to the Isa University auditorium entrance. As King of Rizia and one of Isa University's most famous graduates, I had been invited to speak at the institution's 750th anniversary. Vina had agreed to come along with Manus as her date. The two of them were in the car behind mine. The driver came around to open the door and took a look out the window. We'd stop right in front of the statues of myself and my family. Our heads had been replaced. The likeness looked good as new. Titus' voice came from the passenger seat. My scouts has given the all clear. It's fine to exit the car. This uh, music seems very ominous, but okay. <laughs> um, seems like we're getting a warmer welcome than last time. I'm pleased local law enforcement is doing its job. A diverse mass of people greeted me with applause as I exited the vehicle. Some were holding a, a, a large banner that read, Welcome Home, Angelica. Plainclothes police officers guarded the building doors. They saluted me as I went inside. 
The seats were already full of students, staff members, distinguished alumni, and nobles from House Saison. Many wore outfits adorned with eyes of university mascots, an anthropomorphic cactus named Spiky. Okay. They rose and cheered enthusiastically as I proceeded down the hall. I was halfway to the stage when the hall erupted into cheers. I turned my head to see Vina and Manis waving to the crowd. Behind him was a dark-haired woman, Angelica. Uh, so let's stop and talk to her. I stopped and waited for her to reach me. She approached me with a smile. I suddenly remembered watching her give a speech in this very auditorium nearly 30 years ago. The person in front of me was much older, but had the exact same fire in her eyes. King Ramis, we meet at last. Hmm. We meet again. I saw you speak when I was studying here. Oh, that's terribly embarrassing. I'm sure I was parroting whatever revolutionary nonsense my husband was filling my head with at the time. Hmm. Yeah, Lucas had the right idea, but his methods left something to be desired. A revolution bought with blood will never succeed. Her eyes traveled past me to Rico, who was already sitting on stage. I should be getting to my seat. We will speak again soon. Hmm. Uh, we can change Rizia together. It's not too late. She nodded, stepped away, and continued down the aisle. Vina split off for the front, uh, excuse me. Vina split off for the front row as I took my place on stage next to Rico. He was seated with his legs spread out, his expression radiating barely concealed disdain. <laughs> hmm... Sit properly and show respect to this venerable institution, Duke Ricardus. They don't respect me around here. I don't see why I should respect them, but as his majesty commands. He reluctantly assumed a more formal pose. The lights dimmed and the dean of the university stepped on stage. I'm sure he's gonna enjoy killing me. After a short presentation about the history of the university, she invited the Duke of Isa to speak. As Rico took the stage, I heard scornful murmurs from the audience. My cousin stepped behind the podium and cleared his throat. As reigning Duke of Isa, I'm honored to speak at the anniversary of Rizia's most renowned university. I must confess to you all, the only higher education I've received is from the School of Life, and I haven't even graduated yet. Nobody laughed. Rico frowned and continued. <laughs> but when I took charge of Isa, I realized what an important role this institution plays. Isa University was founded in order to preserve our kingdom's cherished traditions and pass them on to the next generation, to instill young people like yourselves with a stable moral center, even when one is lacking outside these walls. But somehow, over the years, that purpose was lost. He glanced at me. Like the rest of Rizia, this school has become a breeding ground for an ideology that prioritizes foreign perspectives over our own. A place where this nation's greatest achievements are seen as problems to be worried over, not triumphs to be celebrated. And where youths are led to believe that the complex realities of today can be solved by waving signs and chanting. He leveled his gaze out at the audience. This isn't education, it's indoctrination. A student sitting near the front yelled, Fascist! Rico jerked his head in her direction. This is exactly what I mean. You can't speak the truth in this country without getting smeared with meaningless accusations. His mouth curled into a sneer. Now, if I actually were fascist, do you think I'd let this young lady make it out of this auditorium alive? The crowd erupted into fury. Their boos escalated into full-throated shouts of down with the Duke. Rico, get off the stage. It's time for the king to speak. Rico opened his mouth to retort, then closed it. He nodded his assent. The audience began cheering as he retreated from the podium. He spoke to me under his breath. You see what I'm up against? I doubt you'll fare much better. Hmm. Just watch. I have the meeting out of my hand. 
The students in the crowd burst into applause as I took Rico's place behind the podium. Still, I could feel the lingering tension in the, in the hall. I glanced at Titus. He was scanning the crowd, alert for the slightest sign of danger. I took out the notes I'd prepared. My fellow cacti. A few students whooped. Hmm. I apologize for the earlier interruption. It was unbefitting of this momentous occasion. Nope. I'm proud to be an alumni of the oldest and most prestigious university in Rizia. Hmm. Uh... After nearly a millennium, Isa University remains a beacon of freedom in a kingdom that has so rarely enjoyed it. Hmm. Which is why I'm truly dismayed that the Duke of Isa has allowed a culture of hate and intolerance to pervade this place. Eh. Eh, or should I go with, and I sincerely regret that for nearly 30 years, the bright minds residing here have had to suffer under the thumb of House Taurus. Hmm. Oh, I look at you all and I see the future that I want this country to have. Diverse curious, unafraid to question authority. And yes, that authority includes your own duke. Hmm. Let's see. He speaks of unity, yet seeks to draw arbitrary lines between us and them. My reign is all about breaking away from the constraints of the past. It is time for Isa to do exactly that. The volume of the crowd was beginning to rise. Rico looked agitated. His eyes darted back and forth from me to the audience. Hmm. I would therefore like to announce that I am removing Ricardus Torres from power, effective immediately. The audience roared. Rico shot out of his seat. What? But your majesty. Titus grabbed his shoulder and forced him back into his chair. My father will not stand for this. The audience's chatter had escalated into a cacophony. I motioned for silence. As I was saying. Mm. Now that your duke has been deposed, I see only one option. Hmm. <laughs> I am placing Isa under police rule to ensure, ensure order and public safety. A new duke will be appointed if and when stability is restored. Um... Isa will no longer have a duke. It will be reincorporated into Brennis and governed by its own democratically elected council. It's probably better. But I'm also trying to work with the Saison, so I'm going to give it back to the Duchess. This is probably terrible. All of this is probably terrible, but let's keep going with it. I have pardoned the Duchess of Isa, Angelica Saison. I now call upon her to resume governorship of her rightful home, which shall be transferred back to the province of Brennis. A hush came over the crowd as my announcement sank in. All eyes turned towards the front row, where Angelica was sitting. Her expression was one of pure disbelief. A 
Arise, Angelica. As she stood up, the auditorium reverberated with thunderous applause. I watched her take it all in. Gradually, her, incredul her incredulity gave away to pure joy. Rico was still frozen to his seat. He seemed to be processing everything that had happened. He was right. Hugo wouldn't stand for this. But with House Saison on my side, perhaps I could still weather the storm. God, I hope so. All right, so that was a thing. <laughs> University's anniversary in in Duke's surprise dip, uh, deposition. Uh, sure, he was deposed, whatever. In a speech given at Isa University's 750th anniversary celebration, King Ramos dramatically announced the deposition of his own cousin, Duke Ricardus Torres, and the end of House Torres' reign over the historic city of Isa. This decision underscores a clear message from the monarchy. Leadership roles within the realm are contingent upon adherence to the principles of honor, integrity, and the greater good of the Rizian people. The swift action taken by His Majesty affirms the king's unwavering commitment to justice and rule and the rule of law. Perhaps even more surprising was the announcement that the new leader of Isa will be the will be disgraced Duchess Angelica Saison, resuming her mantle after almost 30 years of exile. We have doubts about how wise it is for His Majesty to turn against his own house while courting the favor of his one-time kidnappers. However, we trust that Duchess Saison had time to reflect on her actions and turn her over a new leaf. We expect her to reign with the grace and dignity of a woman of her pedigree. <laughs> oh, this is all going to be so terrible. Read the report. Rico Torres deposed. In the early hours of the morning, former Duke Rico Torres was dragged out of his palace by members of the Golden Guard. He was then taken to the local TV station where he was forced to resign his position as Duke of Isa before being let go. Reportedly, the former Duke then traveled to relatives in the Valenquiris province where he is rumored to be staying for now. <laughs> Angelica Saison inaugurated. A grand inauguration was held at the Isa, at the Isa's palace as Angelica Saison reclaimed her spot as Duchess of Isa. After giving the oath of loyalty in front of the king in Port Drazen, the new Duchess traveled to Isa, where a large banquet saw nobles present, present from all across the country. And although King Ramos himself was absent, several of his closest advisors, including Hugo Torres, was present, were present to celebrate the momentous occasion. Oh man, that must have been tough. Reports emerge of torture prison. The BFF guerrilla group announced to the world that it managed to reveal the existence of a torture facility deep inside Wayland proper. The ultra strict prison is supposed to not only hold BFF members, but also some of the arrested re uh, reported as missing in the aftermath of the Zeal bombing, possibly including Rizian citizens. Oh God, that's not going to be great. God dang it, Wayland. Requested meeting with Hugo or meeting with Queen Livingston. Flight to Thurnborough. Yeah, let's do that first. The thump of airplane wheels on asphalt jolted me from my sleep. I was seated in the commercial jet we chartered, we chartered for our royal visit to Thurnborough. It had been a long, bumpy ride. Lorento was in the seat next to mine. On seeing I was awake, he smiled. Good morning, Your Majesty. I'm glad you were able to get some rest. Mm. <laughs> I always sleep well on airplanes. No phone calls or letters, no responsibilities except to get from point A to point B. Yeah, I'm like that in real life too, so. Refreshing, I agree. He pulled a tin of wax out of his pocket and dabbed some onto the ends of his mustache. With all the foreign turmoil happening lately, it is comforting to know that Queen Beatrice is still on our side. Hmm. She's family. Family members support each other, no matter what. Ha! Yes, I have no doubt that Her Excellency still harbors warm feelings towards you. The plane's door slid open. An aide informed us that everything had been cleared for our arrival. Thurnborough, Thurnborough Airport, one of the biggest transportation hubs in Marcopa, had been completely emptied of passengers for our visit. As we descended the airplane stairs onto the tarmac, 
The Horn Quartet played a jubilant fanfare. Photographers in a cordoned off press area eagerly began snapping pictures. A red carpet stretched from the plane to a waiting motorcade next to a pair of limousines. Beatrice Livingston and the Roomberg royal family waited to greet us. The queen had compassionate had a compassionate look in her eyes as I approached. We exchanged cheek kisses. My dear brother-in-law, what a pleasure it is to finally host you in Thurnborough. Uh, your niece sends her warmest regards or warmest wishes. How lovely. Pity she cannot be here. She abruptly turned and regarded Lorento, who was standing behind me. Mr. Escabel, His Majesty is lucky to have retained the services of a fine statesman like yourself. The good fortune is all mine. With a flourish, he knelt and kissed Beatrice's hand. She blushed slightly. Let's not delay. We have a full program of events planned at the Emerald Palace. Oh, you remember King Consort Boris and Prince Bradley. Lorento and I exchanged cursory greetings with the two men. A chauffeur opened their limousine door and they stepped in. Queen Beatrice, Lorento, and I were escorted over to a second car. I hope you two don't mind the company. We have so much to catch up on. I thought we should start right away. Uh, good thinking. You never know who's listening in at the palace. I assure you our security is second to none, but of course, one can never be too careful. We got into the car and sat facing each other on leather banquets. The engine thrummed to life and we began moving. Once we were in motion, Beatrice smiled at the two of us. Well, look at us, still allies after all these years. Your business-friendly policies have helped both of our nations greatly. The recent turmoil in Isa gave me pause, but I trust you know what you're doing. Uh... Uh, I'm not going to tell her that. As long as we have Roomberg's continued support, we shall not falter. You will, fear not. I admit I was somewhat disappointed when Rizia lost access to the Oris gas field. We have other energy sources to fall back on, or so Miss Warner tells us. I do hope they are stable. I wouldn't want to have to go begging to Swordland in the case of an energy crisis. Oh, so she hasn't invaded <laughs> Swordland yet? I understand you've been having some trouble with the Republic lately. Sorlin has troubles with us, Mr. Escabel, not the other way around. It's true we closed our embassy in Lechaven, but that was a long overdue response to the Republic's many attempts to isolate us. And then there's President Rain, and then their President Rain had the nerve to condemn us. Lorento looked distressed. He nodded at Beatrice to continue. Oh, so I guess in this timeline, we're going to get a a more um, diplomatic reign. Ooh, that would be interesting now that I think about it. Now it makes sense why you need a save file in order to start this up. Huh. Interesting. Very interesting. Frankly, Your Majesty, the fact that Rizia is maintaining its connections to Swordland amounts to a betrayal in my eyes. Uh... Mm. I'm not a fan of President Rain either, but I've got to honor the deals I made with his predecessor. I respect that you are a man of your word, but I fear that the Swordish president is not. It may not appear so at the moment, but Rain is most certainly up to something. He will stab both of our kingdoms in the back with no hesitation. Mark my words. We rode on. I looked out the window at a completely empty freeway. How's everyone else in Grace? Oh, just fine. A little rebellion here or there, but nothing to worry about. I've not yet uh, broached the subject of zeal. Uh, we should be getting the region back soon, assuming we stick to the terms of my agreement with Victor Smollett. In that, in case that deal doesn't work out, I have another opportunity for you. She leaned forward and spoke confidently, confidentially. 
I suggest, I suggest that you take advantage of Roomberg's contacts within the Bloodish Freedom Front. The Bloods? Uh... But the terrorists... They are persecuted. They are, they are a persecuted minority fighting an oppressive government. That's why you're funding both sides, ma'am. And their struggle can conveniently be channeled towards zeal. Lorenzo coughed. <laughs> if I may, Your Excellency, zeal has nothing to do with the former uh, Greater Blutia region. Why would the BFF get involved there? Any action that destabilizes the Smolik regime will help the Blutish cause, no matter where it is carried out. Lorenzo pondered over this for a moment. I am loath to, su to suggest violence as a solution to zeal to the zeal conundrum, especially since Wayland may yet return the region through diplomatic means. Hmm. If we funded the BFF and Smolik found out about it, he'd have an excuse to hold on to zeal forever. And who would tell him? Do you run that leaky... Do you run that leaky of a ship, your majesty? Hmm. Uh, I am not going to do this. Yeah, I'm not going to do this. It's not that I don't think that I can't get away with it, but I think this is another one of those, you know, are you choosing violence or are you choosing diplomacy type deal? So... I'm not going to do this. Uh, I don't like this. We'll figure out another way to retake zeal. Suit yourself, Your Majesty. It was just a suggestion. At any rate, Your Excellency, thank you for this offer and for entrusting us with such sensitive information. Why, certainly. What are allies for? Now, is anything else on your mind? Mm. Uh, If I told you that I moved on from Lena, would it bother you? The queen fixed me with a long stare. Finally, Beatrice laughed lightly. It's been over ten years, my dear. I would be concerned if you had moved on. Fret not. As long as my niece is still heir apparent to the Rizian throne, you will always be family in my eyes. Oh god. That, that was a very particular way of saying that, <laughs> but okay. Only because she's the heir apparent, not because that's your niece. Okay. We turned off the freeway. The massive green domes of the Emerald Palace loomed in the distance. We finished the journey in comfortable silence. There was still a long visit ahead of us. Okay, so what else do we have going on for the moment? Um, we have a requested meeting with Hugo. I guess it means I'm back. <laughs> Rizia and Runeberg reaffirm alliance. Following successful negotiations between Queen Beatrice and King Ramis, both partners have, as expected, agreed on strengthening cooperation between both of our kingdoms. Historically, our nations have been tied together, even including a blood tie between the late Queen Lena and our very own Ramis. Uh, we at the Royal Herald are looking forward to an era of increased cooperation. Is that how that would work? Because, I mean, I thought if, I mean, she died before she became queen. So technically she's a princess, right? Because, I mean, Princess Diana is still called Princess Diana. She isn't posthumously post -humously known as, uh, you know, Queen Diana. Then again, in that case, uh, Charles remarried. So. Requested meeting with Hugo. Uh, let's get to it. After receiving the news that I had deposed his son, Uncle Uncle Hugo was on his way to talk to me. Oh yeah. Thoughts were running through my mind as I paced back and forth in my chambers. If he were open if he were to openly go against me, I'd have a big problem with my entire house. I thought about each scenario in my head and tried to devise a plan. I looked at the oversized key on my desk, a symbolic key to Isa. The Saisons had sent it as a token of gratitude for reinstating their duchess. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. I granted Hugo permission to enter, and he walked in. He seemed more sad than angry. Something that that took that took me off guard. Your Majesty. He bowed in front of me, lower and longer than he'd normally go for. Hmm. 
You can rise, uncle. There's no need for that. Promise, my king, may I speak freely? You always have, Hugo. Speak your mind. It's about my son. Hugo leaned forward slightly, his hands clasped together, choosing his words carefully. About your decision to remove him as the Duke of Isa, I understand that he was not popular in the city yet. Hmm. It was a decision not made lightly, uncle. The entire population was demanding his removal. Uh, his actions left me, left me no choice, uncle. He was endangering the stability of our kingdom. Hugo's expression remained unchanged, but there was a flicker of sadness in his eyes. I understand the weight of the crown and the decisions it the demands, but he is my son, Ramus. And I... I was not consulted. His demeanor made me feel uncomfortable. I couldn't meet his gaze. I had to look away. Mm. I value your counsel, Hugo, more than you know, but some decisions must be made swiftly to protect the realm. Indeed, and I wouldn't question your judgment. I have served this family and this kingdom all my life, Ramus. My loyalty has never wavered. But as a father yourself, you must understand. Mm. Mm. I do not doubt your loyalty, nor do I take your sacrifices for granted. Your son's removal was not a punishment, but a necessity. For him, for you, for all of us. I do not question your motives, Ramus, but I nonetheless believe I was owed a consultation. The loss of his position has repercussions for his future and for the name of our family. Some form of compensation could ease the tra this transition. Hmm... I see. You seek a salve for the wound this has caused our lineage. Not as a challenge to your authority, but as a balm for our family. I'm just asking for something in return. A role, an estate, something to maintain the dignity of my son and provide a path forward for him. I understand you cannot offer him a title right after revoking it, but please consider offering him a job in the capital. How about he works for your security counselor? as the chief of security of Port Drazen. What? <laughs> Are you fucking insane? <laughs> Sir, I, I will give him a job, but not that. So he can escalate tensions right at my doorstep as well? No, I'm sorry. Hugo took a deep breath, his posture relaxing ever so slightly, yet there was an underlying current of disappointment in his voice. Then I shall stand by your decision, as I have always stood by you and your father before you. My loyalty to the crown and to you remains unshaken. You are my monarch and my family. He extended his hand to me. Mm. Shake his hand. We shook hands. Hugo looked at our hands for a moment before placing his own atop mine. For the kingdom and for our family. As Hugo exited, I was left to ponder the intricate balance of ruling where the lines between kinship and kingship blurred. I stood up and prepared for my next meeting. Uh, that's kind of ominous, but also at the same time, I kind of feel for, you know, for Hugo. Because to, to a certain extent, I, again, I do feel like he is basically Otto Hightower and just constantly scheming and constantly trying to do stuff. But at the same time, you know, I can understand that, you know, he's also trying to look out for his son. So, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I just, I kind of feel like if he was a really, I don't know. Like, I guess it's different for people that's in power and it's different for people that is, you know, have this status and they're nobles and they look down on people. I don't know what he sees when he looks at people 
rioting and stuff it like like that like i guess he just looks at it as oh it can just be amended or these are just commoner this is just rough raft and it's just like no these people they're upset sir things need to be done your son is an ass he does not need to be duke so sorry you go duke reinhardt's visit okay as the morning sun cast its golden rays over the opulent halls of the palace, I waited for Duke Reinhardt to arrive. The meeting set against the backdrop of the recent Oris Gasfield Agreement was crucial in solidifying our newfound cooperation. I paced the grand reception hall, looking at its walls adorned with tapestries depicting the glorious history of Rizia, while Pable was making sure everything was in order. I stopped in front of one massive tapestry map dated 7th century, which showed the resonant empire at the height of its power. The borders stretched far and wide, including most of the current territories of current-day Morella, Derdia, Wayland, and the southern coast of Lesbia. What are you thinking, Your Majesty? About that map, I mean. Hmm... <laughs> I just really like history. I actually do really like history. I actually went to school to study history. I want to be a history professor myself. I thought as much. I was wondering, Your Majesty. He pointed at one map hung in the corner of the hall. Don't you think that that particular map might be perceived a bit negatively? It was a very rare map depicting the borders of the kingdom in the 18th century, showing Palais as part of Rizia. Um, hmm. You have a point, actually. Why did nobody notice this? What the hell is Mr. Escabel? He'll be welcoming our guests. Should I take it down? Uh, yes, please. Fable took the map down from the wall. Suddenly, we heard a knock on the door, signaling the arrival of the Duke. I'll leave you to it, Your Majesty. Thank you. Before I had a time had time to rec recollect myself, the door suddenly opened. Duke Reinhardt strode into the hall, glancing around at the paintings and tapestries on the walls. He approached me, and we shook hands. Um... Welcome to Rizia, Your Grace. It's great to finally be here, Your Majesty. He smiled and gestured at the two armchairs. Let's have a seat. We both sat down. So, Your Majesty, I hope you've been faring well since we last met. I must say the resolution of Oris has been a game changer for us. I've been reading the reports. Less Power has already begun the extraction and our, our pipeline construction is almost complete. Oris Gas will be able to supply Rizia soon, soon enough. I'm looking forward to talk to you about the details. Oh, so we are not getting that. That's just from the from the dam. Okay. <laughs> That's great news. Rizia looks forward to receiving Palasian gas. Yes, we can begin as soon as the pipeline is complete. Look, Your Majesty. I believe the resolution we reached is more than just handshakes or numbers. In light of this, I've been contemplating the future, you know. Our next steps. Hmm. Our nations have been at a diplomatic dance for a while, but I sense you're hinting at a different kind of partnership. I'm not hinting at anything yet. I just want to hear what the King of Rizia thinks. Um, I'm ready to go further with Palais, Your Grace. Great. I like how you think. We've been circling around it for years, Your Majesty, but I don't want Palais to be a chessboard for Lesbia, nor Rizia. However, I also believe Rizia and Palais are natural partners. Our countries are politically and culturally the closest in southern Marcopa, maybe even the whole world. And now that Rizia has gained our trust, it might be a possibility to reconsider certain agreements with Lesbia, provided that there is an alternative offer from our new partners. <laughs> Let me guess, it's going to cost 19 authority, 23 budget, 
and energy. He looked like he was going to say something, but then stopped. Well, before I get there, I have to relay you some news. Your Majesty, we are very excited to be able to supply Rizia with its energy needs. For the selfless attitude you've shown us, we took upon ourselves to build the necessary infrastructure as a token of our gratitude. Soon, Palace Stream will be able to transfer tons of your demands. Hmm. Mm. Uh, when will it be finished? If everything goes to plan, it will be ready at the end of the year. Uh, good to know, Your Grace. But we didn't strike a long-term energy deal yet. What are your terms for supplying Rizia? As soon as Palestream starts pumping out gas from Oris, it will be relatively cheaper to transport it to Rizia. Having said that, Rizia will be paying 12.5 Arcasian Liras per thousand cubic meters. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. That's not reasonable. We don't have the budget to pay for that. I'm sorry to hear that. This is the price defined by less power, Your Majesty. And they are handling all the logistics, as you know. There is nothing I can do about that. Hmm. <laughs> This is a direct consequence of your willingness to give control of your country to Lespia, Your Grace. Fearing Rizia, you dealt with the devil instead. Oh, please. When Rizia tried to invade us, it was the Lespians who defended us. I've already told you before about what I think of them, but Lespia provides us with protection, technology, and, and know how about kickstarting our own energy industries. If you despise Lespia's control over this field so much, you should have stepped up when I offered to sell you the field. He sighed. Unfortunately for the time being, you have to directly deal with Lesbia for the energy prices. Unless Rizia can provide an alternative to Lesbia, I cannot steer us away from them. What do you have in mind? What of grace, your majesty? Drifting away from Lesbia would necessitate stronger allies with common goals. Rizia is a key member. Have you considered extending an invitation our way? Hmm. I could probably pull that. Hmm. Actually, I've been waiting to talk to you about this myself. I want to see Palais as part of Grace. Our monarchies must stand together. Oh, I'm stoked to hear you agree. So I can expect you to, to extend this invitation at the next grace meeting. Yes, we will be keep we will bring it up to the members and initiate your application. Thank you, Your Majesty. I'll be looking forward to the result of the vote. There's one more thing. Don't you think Rizia and Palais deserve a more intimate connection? This is all sounding very sexual. <laughs> <laughs> Homosexuality is a crime in this kingdom. I I almost want to say that. Intimate, what are you suggesting? I have admired Princess Vina for some time now. She's got the spirit of Rizia in her, and a marriage between us could be, well, it could be something special. I mean, think about it. What better way to unite our lands than through family? Hmm... Sorry, bub. My daughter's already spoken for. Interesting. I don't see a ring on her finger. This union would not only be a powerful symbol of reconciliation between our families, but a merging of our country's destinies. Ah, uh, God. It only requires me selling my daughter. I don't think so. Hmm. I do not wish to discuss this further without making my without my daughter's full consent. This is her decision to make, not mine. Um.
Yeah, I'll just say that. Absolutely. But if her highness is as intelligent as she seems, she won't refuse the chance to make history, nor the opportunity to be married to this. He gestured to his own smiling face. Oh, God. Look, your majesty, my intention is not to execute a power grab. If your daughter does take the throne one day, I'm willing to be the king consort. She can keep the Taurus surname if you and she desire. Just think about it. I'll bring it up with my daughter, but if she says no, that's the end of the conversation. Mm. That goes without saying. Thank you. Was there anything else you'd like to discuss? I, I have something else to offer him? Sure. Yes, I have something to offer you. I believe we can do more than just grace. I'm all ears. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, because my military is so strong. It's time we stand together. I'm offering you a military alliance. Riza can give you the protection you require. You won't need Lesbia anymore. A military alliance, you say? This is a serious offer. One that I would gladly accept. He smiled and we shook hands. Uh. Thank you for accepting your grace. Together we will be much stronger. My decision to cooperate with you has proved to be the right choice, Your Majesty. With your support, Pele can now slowly let go of Lesbia. I'm glad our partnership is proving to, to, uh, pr is proving to be very beneficial. Was there anything else you'd like to discuss? I think we've already discussed everything we possibly can. Great, then we can call it a day. He stood up and shook my hand. Thanks for having me, Your Majesty. It was really nice talking to you, as always. Until next time. I just got a, a military alliance? For nothing? What does that even mean? I don't even know what that means. Uh, okay. I, I mean, I'll, I'll go with it. I'm, I'm fine with that. I guess. Uh, oh, <laughs> rest over unfulfilled welfare promise. Uh, this would give me authority. <laughs> Again, I, I hate having to think about things like this, but yeah, um, I, I do want the authority, so I'm going to send in the riot police. The broken promises regarding improved welfare services have led to a significant protest near the capital at Bronis. The crowd, frustrated by unmet assurances of better health and education funding, demands immediate action from the crown. Yeah, authority. Mm. Three killed in Stampede. A large demonstration uh, dem oh, Scott. A large demonstration filled the streets of Bronis as people from across the country traveled to the town to demand improved welfare services, frustration especially was heard at the broken promises of improved spending by the king. As the night fell, riot police on horseback charged into the crowd, resulting in countless injuries, with at least three protesters dying due to a stampede. Hundreds of arrests were made, with many transferred to other provinces due to limited holding cell capacities in the capital region. Oh, that's not good. That's not good at all. Okay. Um, let's see. That would cost all of my budget. Hmm. <clears throat> oh, that would cost all of my authority. Excuse me. Uh, let's see. This would give me two budget per turn. Hmm. It would cost me all of my authority, though. <laughs> Mm, I'm definitely not doing that. I don't think this is going to help me now. Uh, that would give me one budget per turn. Hmm. That would just do little menial things. Hmm. 
Okay, I think I am going to do the one that gives me two budget per turn. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Alrighty, that's going to take a lot of people off, but hey, two budget per, per turn. So there you go. <laughs> non Ruhus's tribute to be issued by the crown. In a bold move, the palace announced today that the king has signed a new decree implementing a 20% VAT on non Ruhus's religious communities. The justification given was that while Rizia, despite being, excuse me, <coughs> despite being a proud Ruhus's nation, is tolerant of other religions, it does expect them to contribute to uphold the Ruhus's character of the kingdom. The policy is intended to prevent the diminishing of Ruhusism as a religion within our borders. Funds raised by this tax will be primarily invested into maintaining Ruhus' sanctuaries and, and towards promoting the religious unity of the people. Foreign countries like Wayland and Rumberg have already voiced some concern, but the palace rebutted, saying that Rizia shouldn't be expected to give up the very soul of its identity to people coming in from abroad. Uh, that's kind of rude. <laughs> Police forces avoid chaos as opponents of the crown gather. A large demonstration by opponents of the crown has been successfully handled by His Majesty's police force. Thanks to decisive action by the authorities, damage to the town of Bronis was largely avoided as public as the as police swiftly swiftly intervene where necessary and arrested uh, the troublemakers. God, that was hard to get through. All right, dinner with the family. This is probably going to end up with me being poisoned. Golden candlesticks stood along the length of the table in the royal dining room. Their flickering light cast a warm glow on my daughter's face, matching the warmth in her eyes. My mother hurried into the room, holding the train of her silk bro brocade gown. Pable calmly pulled out her chair. Truly sorry, dears. It took two ladies in waiting to squeeze me into this old thing. <laughs> but I wouldn't miss supper for the world. It's been ages since the three of us sat around the same table. Hmm. Yes, even among the many pressures of ruling, a king must make time for his family. Same goes for the princesses. Pardon my interruption, but dinner is served. Pable rang a small bell. An army of kitchen staff materialized around the table, bearing plates of food. He fastidiously wiped the dust off of an ancient-looking wine bottle before pouring glasses for Vina and my mother, then me. A rare Contable Grand Cru, bottled in 1926, days prior to the uprising. Hmm. Hmm. I bet it's aged more gracefully than I have. The others laughed politely. Heavy is the head that wears the crown, but even heavier are the under-eye bags. <laughs> Pable bowed and disappeared back into the kitchen. I looked down at my plate. Dinner tonight was monkey's lobster with rice and plenty of butter. Didn't I have lobster when I was with my daughter? Your father couldn't stand lobster as a child, Vina. I could only get him to eat it by telling him it was a magical creature called a sea pheasant. <laughs> Wait, there's no such thing as a sea pheasant? My mother snickered. Vina didn't respond. Hmm. What's on your mind, Vina? You know you can tell me anything. Nothing. Or, well... I had a long conversation with Manis the other day. She slowly put down her fork. The topic of marriage came up. Hmm. Aha, I knew you'd come running to me about this sooner or later. She looked at me warily. And what are your thoughts? Mm. Before I agree, there is another marriage opportunity that we must discuss. What? To whom? Duke Axel Reinhardt. Vina pushed away her plate with a stunned expression. Oh, honey, don't look so surprised. Hmm. I suppose you have objections. <laughs> I object to you and the Duke of Palais discussing this without my involvement. As for the marriage itself, 
He's handsome, to be sure, but I'm not in love with him. Hmm. Uh. Oh, I didn't want to say any of this. Um, I do not need to tell you how important alliances between monarchies are, Vina. You yourself are a product of one. Vina sniffed indignantly. I'm well aware of that. Aunt, Aunt B never ceases to remind me of it. All of the more reason for you to marry a duke, sweetheart. Imagine the look on Her Excellency's face. But what about the Reinhardts? Do we really want to merge our house with theirs? How do you know they'll even be on board with our plans for reform? Hmm. Let me see. This is not a merger, it's an acquisition. Reinhardt and his family will fall in line if they want Rizia's protection. I still don't know. As much as I've enjoyed being on your council, I still believe our kingdom's citizens should have more of a say in its future. I thought that's what you wanted as well. A, martial, a marital alliance with another monarchy feels like a step backwards to me. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Damn. It's not difficult to understand, Vina. Either you stick to your rigid ideals and die a failure, or marry the Duke and gain wealth and power beyond your wildest imagination. That's rude. Uh... Mm. I still have every intention of bringing change to Rizia. Our chances of success will be much higher with the wealth and support of Pale behind us. Um, I didn't want to go this route. Um... <laughs> I was just, I just wanted to bring it up just to see what she would say, just so I could say that, hey, I brought it up to my daughter. She was against it. Um, I may actually restart this conversation. If I marry Reinhardt, I intend to hold you to that promise. My mother was smiling proudly. Joining the Royal Council has agreed with you, hasn't it? I used to be so jealous of noble women like you. They'd come into my establishment spending like tycoons and talking like encyclopedias. But when I joined your ranks, I realized the price of all that privilege. Sooner or later, you've got to put your personal aspirations aside and do your womanly duty on behalf of the kingdom. Uh, mm, no, mother, that's not going to be Vina's life. My daughter is free to choose her own future. Sir, you're going back and forth, back and forth here. Not of my own choosing. Again, I, I didn't want to go this far. I just wanted to bring up like, hey, you know, Axel said he wants to marry. I just want to tell you. Being a pause, suddenly uncertain. Marrying Duke Reinhardt is what's best for Rizia, isn't it? Hmm. Never mind the kingdom. I want what is best for you. She took a deep breath. I'll do it, father. I agree to wed the Duke of Palais. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, god damn it. No, I wish I would have just had Manus assassinated. God damn it. Ah. I just need to figure out what to say to Manus. I'm sure he'll understand. You can always keep seeing him on the side, after all. <laughs> uh. If you do, use caution. I want your children to have that Reinhardt jaw. Oh my god, that's terrible. <laughs> uh, oh god. Give the Duke a chance first. He could surprise you after all. Oh, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Payable some champagne. We've got a royal engagement to celebrate. Right away, madam. He absconded to the kitchen and returned with the bottle. Just sparkling water for me. Abel nodded and filled our glasses. He filled our glasses and Vina hoisted hers high. The hint of a smile was beginning to show on her face. To a reunited Rizia, perhaps this will be fun after all. Hmm. Wait, I still have your mother's ring. I want you to wear it at the wedding. 
Oh, Father, it would be an honor. We clinked our glasses. Over dessert, we began discussing the wedding preparations. Oh my god, have I just pulled off a fucking coup? Huh. So, that would mean... Oof. 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 Mmm. Interesting. This means I could possibly... So I would, well, I wouldn't necessarily have a, an, I want to have an alliance with the Saisons anymore. I'm guessing they're not going to be happy about this. But I would have Pele on my side. Um, and I could possibly romance um, Lucida, get a marriage going there. That might be a thing. I, I hope Manus isn't too pissed at me about this. <laughs> Rufus Gregg's royal gossip. I feel like in real life, though, this would be treated very badly. Like, you know, for a princess to turn around and be all madly in love with Manus Saison, and then the next second turn around and be with a duke just out of nowhere. Like, granted, sure, if it's like the UK, I'm pretty sure the papers would just flood everything so where they would pretty much overshadow stuff. But I do feel like a lot of public sentiment wouldn't be happy about that because it just came out of nowhere it would make her look bad too in the process but i mean they are they look like a great couple um but still that that's wild <laughs> that's just wild what's that i hear white's wedding bells for the bell of rizia her highness venus torres the latest out of palais resna is that princess vena has gotten engaged to his grand his grace duke dashing aka axel reinhardt of the grand duchy of palais the engagement is a historic step forward for Palais and Rizia, which are set to finally unite after centuries of cold feet. It's about time Vina tied the knot. The young lady's getting perilously close to her 25th birthday. We'll keep you posted on preparations for the big royal wedding, which is sure to be one for the books. I ain't got the budget. I ain't got the budget. I... Oh, God. Rizia Palais Union imminent? Speculation of a potential reunification of Rizia and Palais skyrocketed as the Rizian Palace announced that Princess Vina will marry Palaisian Grand Duke Axel Reinhardt. Time will tell with implications what implications this marriage will have, but at the very least, ties between the two monarchies will, will be improved and cemented. Whether this can lead to a full-on reunification of both countries, with Palais rumored to be considered as the fifth Rizian province, remains to be seen. That's going to be interesting, too, because if we do get Palais back, does that mean we get all their gas and shit? And if we get all their gas, ha <laughs> ha, fuck you, Lesbia. Um, all right, what do we have going on? A coup? It's probably a coup. Ensuring the continuity of the Taurus royal lineage. Hmm. The future of the Taurus royal lineage is at a crossroads with the crown princess's forthcoming marriage. Tradition dictates that she and any children she may bear take her husband's surname, effectively removing House Taurus from the royal line of succession. However, the King of Rizia may issue an, ex an exception, allowing the Taurus name to be passed down matrilineally. Hmm. The Taurus surname and lineage will carry on through Vena. I have turned into my god. I have turned into King Viserys. Uh, Rufus Gregg's royal gossip, Taurus lineage secured. The king broke tradition, but it's for a necessary cause. With the upcoming marriage, Venus' children will carry the Taurus name instead of the husband's one. Thus, the lineage is secured. One can't help but wonder, does this mean that King Ramus' plans to, to no longer have a son? What would happen if something bad happened to Vina, the king's only child? We can only pray together that that, that eventually never occurs. Okay, let us continue. Chapter 3, Leviathan. Doesn't sound good at all. Doesn't sound good at all. All right, I've made it to chapter three. I have plus four authority coming in. Um, why? <laughs> I guess something fell off. Um, I have plus one budget coming in. What happened to the plus two? Something else came in.
Uh, military expenditures, I guess. I don't know. Um, sure. All right. But I have some budget and I have some monies. So let's continue. Uh, Security Council meeting and I have a guild of royal allies. Veninism wins civil war and stalemate. Oh, God. I guess I needed to um, provide more. Um, more whatchamacallit. The civil war in Veninism evolved into a prolonged stalemate where neither side could clinch a decisive victory. Cathapor remained under monarch's control while Suri in, yeah, Suri uh, continued its resilient stand despite the ebb and flow of Rizian support. The drawn out battles for Rakkara and Peguvi became symbols of the enduring impasse with each side gaining and losing ground in a seemingly endless cycle. In Tamarin, this deadlock played out fiercely, with constant skirmishes and strategic maneuvers yielding little change in control. The nation divided, I mean the nation, divided and more weary, yearned for a resolution. But as days turned into months and months turned into years, the conflict became a part of daily life with no clear end in sight. Uh, I'm just gonna ignore this lost cause, fuck them. That was a waste of money. Fuck <laughs> shit. Okay. Uh, what else is happening? Uh, geopolitical. That's odd. Veninism civil war grinds to a halt. No end in sight. With neither the revolutionaries nor the prince consort able to gain the upper hand despite years of fighting, the Veninism civil war has entered a bloody stalemate, with brutal trench warfare wearing down both sides. While several countries have urged the Veninism monarchy to negotiate and bring about a lasting peace deal, it would seem Kabun Sang Tam is not willing to listen to any country aside from his traditional grace allies, who have remained quiet on the matter. Meanwhile, the besieged monarchy has criticized some of its long-standing allies, especially calling out Rizia, saying a lack of military support is preventing it from achieving the final victory. Sir, you have been getting your ass whooped this entire time. If it weren't for me, you would have gotten your ass whooped finally. So be thankful you just had this stalemate. But, you know, since you're in this position, fuck you. All right. Security Council meeting. Uh, we have a Guild of Royal Allies report. Intensified support to overcome stalemate and Vendanism. Grace is escalating its support for the monarchist forces and the Vendanisms of a war. In a bid to break the ongoing stalemate, we are deploying additional resources and providing enhanced strategic assistance. Our alliance is determined to achieve a decisive victory for the monarchist cause, reflecting our steadfast commitment to monarchist principles and our resolve to influence the outcome of this critical conflict. Yeah, y'all can have it. Security Council meeting. I felt the cool sand between my toes as I ran along the beach of Zeal with my grandparents. Ahead, the vast expanse of the Gulf of Mordia, of Mordia stretched out endlessly, shimmering in the sunlight. I remembered the sensation of the salty breeze tussling my hair as our boat glided across the surface, the rhythmic sound of the waves, the cries of seagulls. It was a simpler time, a time of pure joy, untainted by the weight of royal duties. Good afternoon, your majesty. I'm pleased you could join us. Okay. That just kind of <laughs> scared me. Lucida's words brought me back to reality as I entered the council room, reminded that I was here for a security briefing. Lucida and Titus promptly rose from their seats. Huh. Hmm. Oh, you know me, always eager to dive into the riveting world of bureaucratic discussions. Well, let's hear it. Very well. As you know, we're here to go over the latest updates regarding the transfer of zeal to Rizian governance. With your permission, we'll begin. Hmm. Permission granted. As you're aware, Wayland's three-year probationary period, as Smollett called it, is coming to an end. If they uphold our agreement, we could see a peaceful transfer of governance in a few months. If being the key word. Hmm. Yes, Smolik doesn't have the most reliable track record when it comes to keeping his promises. 
What are the chances that he'll follow through? Here is where we are we are regarding progress on Zeal's return, Your Majesty. I can only speak with authority about the security related terms of your agreement. We are upholding the border ban you agreed on. Our Navy is still engaged in blockading ships carrying potential BFF terrorists from Wayland's southern mainland. It seems like we're continuing to uphold the rights of Wessex citizens in Rizia. I believe we're on track to meet the terms set, set in our agreement three years ago, but you would know best. With all that in mind, I suggest discussing our contingency plan for getting Zeal back should our agreement fail. Hmm. Agreed. Let's explore our options. The way I see it, we can either approach this diplomatically or, if necessary, take a more aggressive stance. Um, I'd like to start by discussing the options that, pre the, that present the lowest risk of open conflict. While we don't have a lot of options, we could revisit sending in the ADA. Their advocacy for Rizian values and culture could help garner support for the from the populace by encouraging them to push for a referendum on reunification. People tend to value having a say in shaping their own destiny. True, Hatta has demonstrated considerably effective, considerable effectiveness in their operations. We should absolutely keep them in mind should additional services be required. If those are our only diplomatic options, let's hear what our less than diplomatic alternatives look like. While the Crown's relationship with Suamina isn't great, to put it mildly, I still see a potential for collaboration. By framing this as a strategic partnership, we could show them how our goals align with theirs, stability and prosperity for Zeal. Offering financial incentives could also sweeten the deal, ensuring they see the benefits of joining forces. In short, they'd bolster their, their influence and we gain a powerful ally. That said, it's worth noting that their methods are extreme and could risk backfiring, turning the public against us. Hmm, good point. We need to tread carefully regarding on how much we should support Suamina, if that's the path we choose. Agreed. The drawbacks might outweigh the benefits. Anyway, in conclusion, you'll be pleased to know that the momentum behind Zeal's reunification with Rizia continues to grow at a steady pace. As for the armed resistance movement, it's steadily gaining momentum, albeit at a modest pace, in support of Rizia's reunification endeavors. Hmm. Thank you. This is good information to know moving forward. Hmm. You've presented me with a lot to consider. It goes without saying that managing the complexities of the zeal situation has been genuinely trying. You can be confident that we possess the, ne the necessary tools to get the job done. I echo Lucida's sentiment. I'm confident that we will find a solution that aligns with the best interests of Rizia. Meeting adjourned, Titus saw himself out. However, Lucida remained behind. Hmm. I believe these findings call for a celebration. What do you think? A flirtatious smirk played on Lucida's lips. Depends on how you like to celebrate, Your Majesty. What did you have in mind? We left the council room to retire in my private quarters shortly thereafter. <laughs> I'm such a hound dog, Jesus. Okay, news. Anticipation and anxiety mount to Zeal's transfer of governance nears. With the imminent transfer of governance from Wayland to Rizia slated to occur, anticipation and trepidation over Zeal's return mounts. The prospect of Rizia reclaiming control has stirred excitement among citizens, eager for renewed, re renewed sovereignty after Wayland's extended stewardship of the territory in the aftermath of the Friendship Day bombing. However, lingering uncertainties about the transitions process has fueled anxiety. While diplomatic assurances offer comfort to many, some critics accuse President Smolok of exploiting the tragedy, using it as a justification to maintain Wayland's control over Zeal, raising questions about the true intentions of Wayland's leadership in the region. Despite these concerns, the focus remains on the forthcoming transfer of governance back to Rizia and the diplomatic efforts to ensure a smooth transition. 
All right, what do we have next? Republic of Lesbia. A diplomatic meeting, okay. When we arrived in Perla, the press surged forward at me like a relentless horde, shoving their cameras and microphones my way. Their shouts and pleas for attention clashed against the stoic demeanor, the stoic demeanor of the lesbian security guards. These guards, clad in crisp dark uniforms, formed a protective barrier around us, their eyes scanning for any reporter daring enough to breach their formation. Our convoy commenced its journey, a series of sleek black cars gliding through the bustling streets of Perla. As our convoy eased to a stop, a stop at the entrance of the Yellow House, I stepped out onto the cobblestone driveway. The building itself has a, was a small but imposing structure of classical design, its yellow painted walls standing out boldly against the greenery of the park. I was led into the waiting room, a space with an understated elegance, furnished with leather chairs and a mahogany table, where sunlight filtered through the lace curtains, casting soft patterns on the floor. As I waited for Prime Minister Alvarez, my attention was captured, my attention was captured by a mysterious looking teapot, resplendent in its golden sheen. Mm. Wait a minute. I know this. <laughs> This was a trick in the last game. <laughs> but leave it alone. I left it alone. As I stood there, absorbed in thought, the doors opened and Prime Minister Alvarez came in. I see you immediately spotted in your kingdom's gold, your majesty. It is an ancient resonant artifact uncovered in southern Lesbia. Quite a valuable item, I've been told. Ah, forgive me. He offered his hand and I shook it. Please, let's get comfortable while we discuss our matters. On his gesture, we moved to the sofas and sat down. So, Your Majesty, it's good to see you again. It's good to see you too, Prime Minister Alvarez. Of course. Then let's dive straight into it, Your Majesty. I would have preferred to have reached an agreement on the predicament we have with the Its. I will take the liberty to say that you started quite a mess by casting your vote the way you did. We didn't need to go through all this renegotiation process, don't you think so? I suppose not. You might be enjoying the occasional visit to Morella, Your Majesty, but I certainly do not. I could have just voted against holding any discussions in the first place, he sighed. Look, we very much believe in cooperation here in Lesbia, as well as second chances. If we are to put that behind us, you have to make sure the MITS deal never happens. If we veto the proposed renegotiation plan, it cannot be implemented. He tapped his finger aggressively on the table. You will sabotage the deal. I'll handle Prime Minister Saltana so we both keep our shares and thus we'll have the doors open for us to develop a strategic partnership with Rizia. Mm, you know what? I'm going to do it because the... That, oof, I was just about to say something, but that lady, she tried to turn around and kill me with a biscuit. So yes, I'm being, a pe I'm, I'm being petty. I'm being petty as shit. I'll take your word for it, Mr. Alvarez. Don't worry, that resolution will not reach the light of day. Great to hear that. He smiled. Oh, I almost forgot. He walked to a wooden cabinet full of alcohol bottles. Would you like a drink, Your Majesty? Uh, I'm good, thank you. He poured whiskey for himself and sat back down in front of me. Well then, you know, Wayland is starting to create a lot of problems for that region. I have serious stability concerns. Your allies are complicit in this stability, as much as I support any actions against the Wessex government, as, w as well as any substantial support for movements as just as the Blutish rebels. This only resulted in President Smullock extending his powers and conducting a massive military operation right on our doorstep. And Lesbia also has a considerable number of Blutish people living inside our borders. We don't want the problems of Swordland and Wayland to spread to our country. The Wessex seized the assets of our companies and sent a wave of refugees towards our borders. They're escalating the problem. Be careful when you're dealing with President Smullock. He's getting increasingly out of hand. Mm. You are already aware of our situation with him, Mr. Alvarez. 
Let's just keep our eyes on him. I'm also worried about Vogslin increasing Vogslin's increasing pressure on our region. Hegel is desperately looking for partners to sway towards the CSP and fuel incidents to create division in Eastern Markopa. They've unfortunately shown that they are quite capable of inciting revolutions in Rika and beyond. We both need to be resilient against the Volgish threat. They are the real problem. Mm. Thank you for your for the advice, Mr. Alvarez. You might not see it yet, but I believe he intends to take Halelji, uh, Halelji land by force, igniting a series of conflicts that will that we may find ourselves in the middle of. I know you have the ear of Queen Livingston. He took a sip from his glass and turned to me with a serious face. Grace is an important force on this continent, and I hope you will be on the side of peace if it ever comes down to that. Hmm. Grace is also worried about the expansion of the Contanda security pack. We are aligned on that matter. That's a relief to hear. Well, anyway, we are normalizing our relations with Roomberg, and I just wanted to say that I need to talk to Queen Beatrice about all this face to face. Can you extend your support in organization in organizing such a visit? That would make things much smoother. Of course I would. I'll make sure she hears your concerns. I appreciate that. Thank you. He took another big gulp from his glass. Was there anything else we could do for each other? Uh... I request financial assistance from Lesbia. Maybe we can talk about a possible trade deal. I'm not sure if we can offer any extra money for the Rizian economy at the moment. He stopped for a moment to think. Unless you can give us something that would make Viedo really happy. Calicabiz? Lesbia would be interested in leasing the island for the Edo. What? Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Alvarez. I was thinking more about a conventional trade deal. I understand. I don't think I can offer Lesbian money for anything else at this moment. Was there anything else? No, Mr. Alvarez. Thank you for the meeting. Thank you for coming, Your Majesty. I stood up and walked out of the room with quick steps. Jesus, want me to sell the whole freaking island, sir? All right, we have Port Drazen. We have a council meeting, it seems. I passed through the guards of the palace towards the council chambers to meet with the council. Uncle Hugo greeted me in the front of the doors. Your Majesty, the counselors are waiting for you. He opened the door and held it for me as I entered inside. The counselors were already seated around the table, deep in conversation. When they noticed us enter, everybody rose from their seats. Uh, good day, everybody. The counselors nodded and took their seats. Before we begin, I want to extend my blessings for the upcoming royal marriage. Congratulations, Your Highness. May God bless the union between you and Duke Reinhardt. Thank you, Grand Wiseman. She smiled and bowed her head to Saul in respect. Your Majesty, may I? Yes, Your Grace. I'll start with a quick general overview. According to the AN reports, we have average standards of livings, and the discontent among the populace is limited to a small minority. There are also major concerns from the labor leaders who seem to try and organize the workers to strike. The current working conditions are pushing many to their, to their side. Thank you, Your Grace, for sharing the reports you received. While I can acknowledge the problems within our industries, the situation is not as bleak as your reports suggest. Uh, ex please explain what you mean by that, Miss Warner. The business leaders are quite content with the current situation. I don't see any reason to have concerns, especially considering that we are still in an energy crisis. Um... Don't worry, I trust your judgment. Thank you, Your Majesty. Thank you for your comments, Miss Warner. I believe we can continue with the meeting. What would you like to talk about first, Your Majesty? Lorento, what's the state of our foreign affairs? Of course, Your Majesty. I'd like to first congratulate you for brokering a deal with Prime Minister Alvarez. Lesbia is an important partner and a potential threat. We must tread carefully with them. 
Another important point is our scheduled meeting with the Wessex president. Your Majesty will have a chance to talk to President Smolik about the situation with his eel. He may bring up yet another unexpected request or security issue. Regardless of his theatrics, we should do our best to reach a final resolution to ensure the swift return of zeal. If all else fails, we can bring it up in the upcoming Alliance of Nations session. Mm. Thank you for your for the advice, Mr. Escabel. He nodded and continued. On the other hand, our relations with our southern neighbors are still not very positive. The final vote on the MITS issue, which will take place at the start of the next year, will be, defi will be the defining factor for our long-term relations with them. Hmm. Uh, what's more important is that we get a result that is in our national interests. That will be my priority. Our relations with Dirty, on the other hand, has not changed much and their hostility towards the region hasn't ceased. Their clashes with Morella and Wayland still remain a major concern. The fact that both they and Rumberg are rumored to be supporting the Bluetish Freedom Front is an important factor in our relations with Wayland. He stopped for a moment to take a look at his notes. Oh, also Supreme Wiseman Asmal sent us a letter of condemnation criticizing what he calls our continued oppression against Golcondas and Rizia. And in the PS section of the letter, we discovered a Gokanda's curse. <laughs> mm, give me a break. I prayed to work to dispel the bad spirits from Dirtia. I know, Your Majesty. I know. And last but not least, Palais. But Your Majesty is already aware of the situation with them, am I? The Royal Wedding shall take place after your upcoming visit to the Alliance of Nations. I want to take this opportunity to congratulate Her Highness and His Majesty again. Thank you very much, Miss, Mr. Escabel. He bowed his head respectf respectfully. We also recently entered a military alliance with them. As a result, our cooperation with them reached to new heights. So far, Palestream has also been very beneficial for both of our countries. It is a remarkable achievement. We struck a serious blow to Lesbia's interest in Palais by decreasing their reliance to them and opening their way into grace. Our support of their application has already been approved by the other member states. Send my congratulations to Duke Reinhardt. Yes, Your Majesty. That is all for the overview, Your Majesty. Anything else you want to talk about, Your Majesty? Uh, I want an update on our military situation. Eh, it's, it's trash. What's happening with the Rizian economy? <laughs> Elena took out a large notebook, placed it on the table, and opened it up. We have a small budget surplus at the moment. This isn't a bad indicator for our economy. And our reserves may not be enough to give us the precious time to make improvements. She turned the page. We set a focus to diversify the Rizian economy when we ascended the throne. In terms of our energy situation, we have a very rigid energy economy with heavy reliance on certain, res on certain sources. As long as our access to resources remain, this means a, strong, a stronger future. Therefore, the energy crisis continues with no end in sight. I believe this should be our most significant concern. As a result, our industries are not working at their full capacity, and their demands are not being met. But fortunately, our production capacity hasn't collapsed yet, which is surprising. <laughs> hmm. This is a significant problem. What should we do? We should look for ways to find new sources of energy or improve our current extraction capacity. We could look to our neighbors. Perhaps we can work out an import deal. As we find ourselves increasingly marred in what appears to be a deepening recession, there is an alarming trend of substantial withdrawal of investments across the board. This economic climate is dire for new businesses, leading to an increase in solvencies and a significant rise in unemployment which is severely impacting our workforce and marking a tough phase for Rizia's overall economic health. Hmm. There must be additional strategies we can employ, Miss Werner. I agree wholeheartedly. I'm exploring every possible option to strengthen our economy further. This concludes the economic analysis and overview. Anything else you want to talk about? 
our trash ass military. Yes, your majesty. Brazilian armed forces needs investments. In comparison to our neighbors, we are completely behind in terms of our military capabilities. We can currently field around eight to nine fully equipped infantry divisions. Unfortunately, we can only field three mechanized, mechanized support divisions that are specialized, specifically trained to support the assault of our infantry and armed divisions. The numbers we have would make it very difficult to defend ourselves in case of a military conflict. And when it comes to our tanks, we currently field only two tank divisions. All of our neighbors possess more tanks than us, she sighed. On the other hand, our force is barely even capable of contesting Palatian air superiority. Unfortunately, we do not have enough fleets to be able to project any power in the ANSI CNC. Our submarines can also provide the much needed support when necessary. Although we don't have too many of them, they can still wreak havoc in a possible conflict. Hmm. Thank you for the overview. I think we've been through everything. Thank you for everyone's input. We can call this session over. The counselors bowed their heads in respect. After they left, I went back to the gardens of the palace to get some fresh air. As I rounded a bend, I heard a rustle of leaves. When I turned my head, I saw Manis Saison emerging from the shadow of the ancient oak. Why are you always in my palace, sir? Your Majesty, may I have a word with you, please? Uh, of course, Manis. I need to talk to you about something. It is related to our past discussion about potential reforms. Uh, all right, let's hear it. I have some news. The reformists believe the time has come to turn the discussion of reform to reality. We were already collaborating with your majesty on that, and I believe the time for committing to a new direction for the, for the country has finally come. Hmm, I agree. The time has come. I'm glad you agree. He gestured to the corner under the tree. We both walked under it. He lowered his voice. Rizia is considered a constitutional monarchy, but there is no written constitution that defines and protects it. It's time the monarchy transferred its lawmaking powers to elected representatives. If the king himself collaborates in the, in the preparation of this constitution and stands together with the reformist movement in its declaration, no power in Rizia can call it illegitimate. Hmm. It doesn't sound like it will be that simple. What is your plan? We have to make sure nobody has the means to intervene in the process or execute a power grab. We have to play it smart, Your Majesty. We can devise a plan together on how we can go about its declaration, but that will depend on the exact nature of the reforms it contains. Okay, somebody may hear us here. Let's plan this, con this, this constitution and our strategy somewhere safe. Yes, I'll reach out at a better time. Have a good day, Your Majesty. He bowed, walked away, and left the compound. I stayed in the garden for some time in silence. Great. So now it's minus two per turn. Wonderful. <laughs> so it's looking like I'm going to have to spend money in order to make money. Grace trade volume crashes. Great. Um, alarming economic reports reveal significant drop in trade volume with Grace, a crucial economic partner um, adversely affecting the Treasury budget. This development necessitates prompt and strategic response to mitigate the impact on our economy. Possible actions include renegotiating our trade agreements with Grace, seeking new trade alliances, or bolstering domestic in industries to lessen our dependency on Grace trade. Uh, we will look for real partners. Great. Another one on top of that. Always great. Always great. <laughs> oh, man. At this point, I need this game to end because I am getting just perilously close. Let me see. Grace countries express regrets at falling trade volume. Several Grace countries, including Roomberg, have expressed their regrets at the reducing levels of trade between Rizia and the rest of the bloc and hoped it could improve it could improve in the future with renegotiated trade agreements. Okay. Salabus sees reduction in small businesses. A worrying trend is emerging in Salabus, with a significant amount of small shops across 
town shutting down in recent months, leading to a rising unemployment and reduced consumption across the city. Wonderful. <laughs> the razor's edge. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop it here. And in the next episode, we will start off with the secret meeting with Manus Saison. This is this actually has surprised me just how long this DLC is. I expected it to be much shorter than this, you know, maybe eight to nine hours, you know, at best. But this is probably as long, if not longer than the main game, because I can only imagine that if I turned around and actually had the budget and the authority and the energy to pull off certain deals or whatever, that I would be able to extend this for much longer than I've been able to play so far. So I am shocked at just how long this DLC is. This is def this definitely should have been, I mean, this is basically a whole nother game at this point. So, but I've definitely enjoyed it and I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how it concludes. And I think we are getting pretty close to the conclusion, but I'm not sure yet. Uh, I mean, every time I keep saying it and I keep thinking that the game just keeps going on. But I think we are in the final in the final chapter, because if I'm not mistaken, I think, well, no, Suzerain had more chapters. These seem like longer chapters, but there's I don't know. It's weirder. It's it's weird to kind of explain, but they seem about equal in length so far. So, yeah, but um, I don't know how far away we are to the end. Um, Perhaps someone can let me know in the comment section. But um, yeah, we'll just keep on going and see how it goes. So if you like the video, like the video. If you like to see if you would like to see more content, subscribe. I have a lot of things on the channel and I will have many more things in the future. If you have any questions, comments or concerns, please feel free to leave them in the comment section and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Um, also, just a little disclaimer um, at the end of this series, I am going to post a poll um, and it just came to me as I was playing this episode that I want to do another run of Suzerain after the amendment update. Um, and, but I won't be actually having that one on the channel. What I will most likely do is have that one. Um, I'll just be playing that on the side because I'm probably just going to cheat and I'm just going to just go ahead and try to get a complete run through to have for the <laughs> possible um run that's coming after this so you might end up with a cheat run of the of swordland and a cheat run of um rizia in the process but i'll leave a poll up at the it'll be two polls that's probably going to be out at the end of this series one will be which direction should i take swordland in for this dlc and then the next one will be which direction shall i take rizia in for another playthrough and again that's if another playthrough is voted as the thing that will be seen on the channel. So it may be three polls in the process. <laughs> Lots of polls coming ahead. Um, hopefully I can wrap this up by Friday. So that way that'll give me the weekend to turn around and play the main game. And then of course, if I can, because I can probably beat the main game in a day. It shouldn't take me that long to do it if I'm just cheating through it. Um, but as far as the DLC, that'll give me at least... Um, sunday to record and then i will have new episodes out so again that's the plan so far let me know what you think in the comment section and again like i always say i will get back to you so thank you for watching and i will see you in the next one see you